Hi everyone. Hi, is everyone here? Is everyone here on the show? We are just getting into to be uh, it's seven o'clock on my clock and it's four thirty in India. Uh, we are on the Stiletto Foodie page and uh, let me see what's happening on the page. Oh yes. Okay, great. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And this is Ethel Lacosta, and you're on my The Stiletto Foodie uh, show with Ethel Lacosta. Today's episode five. Over the last four episodes, we've had so much of fun happening, right from chefs and homegrown, uh, you know, entrepreneurs uh, sharing all their stories about how their lives have changed with COVID. Uh, how they've reinvented themselves. We've spoken about food from different parts, you know, of um, Malaysia, Goa, India. We've had guests coming in from everywhere, including Dubai, including Bangladesh, including some from the US. So thank you so much. Today, I really have, you know, two, um, two giants of their own in their own making. Uh, Chef Avinash Martins from Goa, India, and Ankita Agrawal from Malaysia. So we're going to wait for a while to uh, to have you know people finding the page, logging into into the Studio to Foodie page, and then saying, "Oh, okay, there we are." And so let's give them some little, some little bit of time. In the meantime, I must share that the three months that I spent in Labuan was was close to heaven for me. Complete bliss. I was spoiled rotten for food. I was spoiled rotten for beer, which is cheaper than water, bottled water. Uh, I made so many friends, and my and these friends from Love One will be on my show today, uh, who spoiled me with food, with love, with care, with attention, and basically kind of you know making sure that I was taken care of, um, making sure that I was you know meeting other people. So I've met all kinds of you know uh, Love One uh, citizens, right from um, uh, uh, agro entrepreneurs. Uh, eco tourism entrepreneurs, uh, green tourism entrepreneurs. It's fantastic when you have ambition and when you have drive, what all you can do. So, thank you, loved one, and thank you to all my friends there, uh, you know, who will come online and uh, watch the Letter Foodie show. I had to do it on a Saturday because yesterday I was flying. So, we, I really couldn't manage that. In the meantime, I had a very special friend who came home to give me a, a welcome to Kuala Lumpur kit. Uh, with with his food, so this is to Eric, Eric of um, Lapar by House, who who was on my stiletto show, a foodie show. He's he's a rock musician who and an excellent bartender who has uh, you know become a food entrepreneur himself. And uh, his food and burgers have been the talk of Kuala Lumpur because they're everywhere from the feed that I can see. So he came with 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 a with a welcome home food kit, if you, if I could call that. With two mocktails, uh, you know that he that he did for me, um, a lovely smoked duck dish, and uh, and, a, and a huge giant burger that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bite into once the show is done because I usually end up so hungry. So this is to Eric, and this is to all my friends from Malaysia, from Kuala Lumpur, from Labuan, from Goa, from Mumbai, from Dubai. Uh, for the love, for the feedback you send me, for your emails that come to me, saying you know, uh, complimenting uh, you know on, on a good show, on the fact that uh, it is bringing people together, even as guests, you know, and uh, they kind of set the clock uh, to watch it. So, thank you. Mm. This is awesome, Eric. Thank you for this. So let's get on. I think let's get on as I see. Um, as I see, you know, the online coming on, coming alive, and there are already comments also happening. Let's get on with uh, Chef Avinash Martins from Goa. Complete pleasure today to to invite you to have you live with us uh, for making the time uh, to kind of you know uh, to come uh, from your restaurant. Uh, figure out all your hustle bustle and say, okay, let's just do this, right? So, uh, Chef Avinash, welcome to the Stiletto Foodie Show. This today is- Thank you, Ethel. And thank you, Ethel, and inviting me for this uh, lovely show of yours. It's an absolute pleasure. And uh, I'm uh, looking forward to this fun uh, uh, episode of yours. Correct. 
So uh, we've done and, you know, we've, we've met each other in Goa, you know, uh, with friends. I've had a, a really great time eating the kind of food that you showcase, right? Uh, and completely amazing because, uh, right. you know, Goan food is, uh, is such a stereotype. I mean, you know, the, the usual sarpatel and the sanna and the shakuti is, is you know, is, is yeah. known, correct? But you were putting a different spin on it correct. altogether. And that was completely amazing. So let right. me tell my audience a little bit about yeah. you. So, so chef, uh, so chef um, uh, Avinash Martins has a restaurant, restaurant of his own uh, in, called Kavatina. Uh, he did his culinary education with uh, at the Merit uh, Swiss Asian School of Hotel Management in Uti, which is in India. Uh, thereafter, he completed his post graduation from the Oberoi Center for Learning and Development in Mumbai. I guess right? Was that in Mumbai, Avinash? The center is in Delhi, but I've uh, trained all across the all across India. So uh, the center is yes. in Delhi. Correct. Uh, uh, after the post graduation, then you worked with the Oberoi Group of hotels, restaurants, and resorts all over India. Uh, you, you have such a you know like, such right. a stellar. I, I saw I saw the feathers uh, you know in your in your cap. Uh, so Chef Avinash Martins has internationally worked under various Michelin star chefs like Chef George Blanc in Lyon, France. Uh, Chef Gary uh, Danko in Hawaii, Chef Thomas Keller in uh, Napa, uh, Napa Valley, California. Uh, I didn't know that myself, yeah. you know, Chef, uh, Chef Avinash. So I was pleasantly surprised and very happy to kind of see that, uh, you know, you you know, your own basket of stars. And then I put two and two together when I saw, you know, the food that you were putting out at Cavatina, which is, you know, completely uh, it is Michelin, Michelin worthy, and I, and I'm not saying this just Thank because you. you know we're close friends. I'm saying this because I really think the standard was so high, uh, you know. And when uh, uh, and I saw it, I tasted it, and our mutual friends, you know, introduced us. Right? Uh, I was like, why didn't right. I know about Avinash before? And he was like, oh, he's very low key. But uh, your your cause is celebration. Your cause is celebration. You can't afford to be low Thank key. You. Can't afford to be here. <laughs> thank you so much. Which is why I'm on the show today. <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you. So how did your journey begin? Tell our audiences, how did your journey begin? Uh, yes, uh, so my journey started uh, while I was a kid. I mm -hmm. always enjoyed cooking. I never thought I would take cooking as a career. Uh, in fact, I come from a background of master mariners. Uh, my dad, my uncles are all... Um, mariners and engineers on ships and uh, masters on board the ships. Um, in fact, after my plus two, I also chose the path. I went and joined the ship as a deck cadet, wanting mm. to be a, a captain uh, uh, to in the in the making. But it so happened that I was not enjoying uh, that particular uh, field. And in six months, I quit. Okay. I okay. came back home, okay. and I was uh, in a kind of a dilemma: is what do I do? Um, then my parents, uh, well-wishers, relatives, gave me a lot of guidance and said, do whatever you like doing best. I said, listen, I love I love cooking. That's my passion. Shall I take it up as a career? <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people said, oh, come on, from a, a, from a, a captain to a cook. Uh, they all said that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my dad, my mom were very, very encouraging and said, listen, don't listen to uh, the others. Others have an opinion. You know mm. what you want to do best. Right. And uh, that's when I said that it's not a cook, it's a chef. And, you know, India has way, uh, uh, way more, much to kind of uh, learn in terms of what a chef is all about. Mm. And I was reading about chefs all over the world, where how the chefs are uh, being heroes and promoting their culture and tradition. So I took this uh, step ahead. I said, I'm going to do what I love to do. And uh, here I am. Uh, I did my hotel management as you introduced me. I did my post grad. I was with the yeah. Obroy. Then I embarked a journey international. That's mm. where the whole thing to me, right? I worked with so many Michelin star chefs. And I saw that they celebrated their own cuisine. They celebrated their own backyard. Uh, everything was uh, so local and but made into a hero. hero. Mm -hmm. When I started seven years back, I was doing world cuisine. I was yes. doing bits of Spain bits of Japan, bits of America here and there. Then I kind of went to a self-realization saying that why am I celebrating other cuisines when I have such a beautiful cuisine of my own? 
Hmm. Well, Goan cuisine, as you uh, said earlier, that you know, it's all about curries and gravies and just a few known dishes, like I would say a kafriyal or a sorpatel or a windalu. That's all yes. Goan cuisine is known worldwide. Correct. But having done a lot of research, working with a lot of historians, working with farmers, artisans, I dug deep and I found that Goan cuisine is just not about these four ingredients uh, dishes. Mm. It's so 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 vast. Uh, you're talking about the pre-Indo-Portuguese uh, era. You're talking about the Saraswat uh, era. You're talking about mm. the pre-era, which is the aboriginals of Goa, the Dungar communities, the Velip communities, who had so much to offer. We have such a huge variety of vegetarian uh, dishes in our repertoire that rest that guests coming to our restaurant are finding it difficult to believe that these dishes are from Goa. They say that we never knew uh, what Goan dishes were, and I mean. This is something which I, which I personally take pride in, and I am being so uh, blessed uh, to support uh, all these local artisans and showcase what our culinary heritage and culture of Goa is. Yes, yeah, I, I'm glad that you mentioned. Right? Uh, I'm glad you mentioned about the entire vegetarian, you know, kind of angle to it because uh, no one associates Goa with vegetarian food, right? It's correct. always you know, correct. different correct. in the meats, right? Yeah. So yeah, correct. I'm very, I'm very, yeah. very happy that you mentioned that. And you all, you have a reputation also of uh, of the farm to table concept because we've been seeing your correct. work. You know, you are actually there. You know, picking out and plucking correct. things and stuff like that, right? Yes. So uh, talking of farm to table, this happened during the pandemic, uh, where my restaurant Kavatina is where I served uh, my dishes. Uh, then I started getting. Uh, uh, requests from my friends and uh, you know well wishers saying that can you do something for us which is more isolated and you know and giving given the fact that the pandemic is on uh, mm -hmm. which is why I said that, yes I do have a farm and I love to put a table for you a very rustic setting and that's yeah. where the whole concept came up also I used that uh, time uh, of a good four five months when we were just doing nothing mm -hmm. I I went along and I you know caught hold of these local guys like the farmers yes. like yes. a toddy tapper. Like yes. a guy who would venture out into a small rivulet with a with a canoe, not the uh, motorized uh, boats. Mm -hmm. uh, the padekar, padekar is a coconut plucker. So I got along all these artisans who I call personal heroes. If you, if uh, the audience and they follow me on Facebook, I try and promote them as well. I give them a better price for what they produce because it's at the end of the day, it's all about Goa and Goa is nothing but the people. Yes, this is just Absolutely. not the the beauty and the landscape of it. It's also the people who get in all the glory and you know all the all the uh, the goodness to Goa. So yes. Goa, I would say, is a celebration for me. My cuisine is a celebration of Goa. It's not about a cuisine. It's about nostalgia. It's about the experience of Granny telling us stories. Mm -hmm. You know, we never used to sit down with a with a cell phone or in front of the TV while we had our food. We used to sit together like a community and then discuss, and it was a beautiful experience. I remember my granny's times uh, as well today. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's so nostalgic, uh, Ethel. It's it's just not food. It's about nostalgia brought about with so many good memories and stories, beautiful with folk tales and stuff. My God, I mean, I can. Yeah. I can get transformed into that era. I know. So you mentioned you mentioned you know grandmoms and, and uh, you know uh, the older folks. I wish. Uh, I had uh, the opportunity to actually spend more time with my grandmom. But the few times that our grandmom, you know, uh, would come to visit us, uh, she would, we would pester her for storytelling, either uh, at the dining table or before bedtime. And then I we okay. realized, you know, that uh, it was the same stories that she would recycle and embellish, right? Okay. So it was, and we said, wait a minute, we've heard the same story before. <laughs> that it sounds different now. Yeah. Thank, thank God for grandparents because uh, oh, I think yes. most, most of us learn, you know, some of the values that come down, including you know values about uh, food and stuff like that, like you mentioned too, come down from yes. our grandparents. Yeah, come down, yes. comes down from our grandparents. You're right. Totally. So, totally. So, so, so when you're creating this entire, when you're creating your your uh, your menu, your restaurant menu, right? Um, what excites yeah. you about it, Chef Avinash? Because uh, because as you said. You're buying produce directly from, you know, from farmers and the fishermen, local fishermen and the local vegetable, you know, uh, uh, vendor or somebody who's growing vegetables. So, so you're bringing right. their stories to the table too. What excites you when you create a menu? So um, my menu at the moment at Kavatina is 
modern uh, contemporary gone as i call it mm-hmm. uh, when i say contemporary i don't uh, uh, do any fusion food i do traditional flavors traditional methods of cooking smoking but i just twist uh, tweak them and twist them that they look uh, more global right yes. um so when i uh, design my menu it's basically uh, first considering the originality of the ingredient okay. it's also considering uh, it's also considering um, the story behind the ingredient mm. uh, and also you know it's not again i just i said it's not about only about taste it's also about what one feels after tasting it it's a good feel factor yes yes it's it's you know all these things it's positive energies i tell my i tell my team back at the restaurant that you know when we serve we should mm. serve with all our love yeah yeah the day you don't feel like working you don't you don't feel the love please don't come and you know join the team because we want to give the best of energies to our guests and yeah. the guests trust me they feel it a simplest of a, a fresh lime soda then done well with a positive mm-hmm. vibe taste amazing as compared to one done with poor vibes so yeah. all these finer integrate uh, yeah you're right uh, things they they show they show they show you're absolutely right in fact i i i'm i uh, m- most times mention it even to people who are in the food business uh, or even to friends right you know w- when they when they eating food right it's like yeah. what emotion does it evoke in you yeah. will tell you the emotion yeah. of the chef who has you know who has yeah. spent time creating it and you know if the chef has been yeah. excited doing it or has just done it because you know oh i have to do it that kind of thing right for the sake of it yeah 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 correct <laughs> it's That's all correct. energy it's all energy the same yeah. way our comment section right now is also beginning to buzz i'm going to get a few of them online okay. uh, yeah so this is eric saying okay. hi hi eric cheers to your cheers to your drink hi. i'm doing the amboy awesome <laughs> i really like it i chilled it up and uh, and i know to kind of drink it so thank you thank you eric we have faisal from bangladesh saying hello atul the kosha greetings from bangladesh hello faisal good to see you back again i have uh, we have uh, mark robert mark robert also is is a fellow um, uh, um, you know uh, great behind the bar also has got into food himself uh, you know okay. and, and and his chain is called the ball men curries i am yet to eat his food so i am back in kuala lumpur okay. mark that uh, your uh, your food kit has to come so hello and thank you for joining us he also has uh, some you know he has some sort of uh, goan ancestry in uh, goa as well uh, mark robert okay. so thank you mark for joining us um there is also uh, geeta here hi geeta thank you for joining us uh, and thank you for being online today and watching the show we have some really exciting stuff happening so stay hooked and uh, you know uh, let me get my second guest who is here and waiting um ankita's ankita agarwal story i think uh, has become a very popular story in uh, in uh, malaysia and uh, more spe- more specifically in mount kiara uh, i met her at at a book at a book event uh, uh, introduced by a mutual friend and uh, i was completely taken up by the way you know how uh, the, her restaurant called vibes cafe has this beautiful laid back cozy very hippieish you know very chill kind of you know feel to it and trust me because i i feel energies and vibes i immediately sank into the same vibe and energy you know of the place itself it's all green it has pillows on the floor you know a little book corner you know you, you get the drift that's where i met ankita and then sat on at her table to eat with her so ankita agrawal is the owner of waves cafe in in mount kiara um she has a very core philosophy her philosophy is you are what you eat and i completely agree with her because i think everything about our bodies uh, is a reflection of what we're actually nourishing our bodies with uh, which is food for the body which is also uh, energy that comes from the food that we eat it's also uh, people who prepare the food for us because that's it's also part of their energy that goes into our body so therefore i i believe it is you are what you eat she has a very a uh, health driven concept uh, where her food is uh, you know um, positioned to be as very wholesome uh, homemade healthy 
very family driven and um, going by her popularity and you know the, the way her orders have been flying off her kitchen i think ankita has made a huge success you know of her work and of her of her philosophy and how she's uh, translated that philosophy of hers into the food that she's that she has been doing so completely diverse and you know and quite flexible with the kind of cuisines that she's also been handling which is local malaysian local indian asian and western ankita has a background in catering as well so she understands you know the dynamics of uh, different palates uh, lately uh, recently now at in the month of august ankita also launched uh, very health driven food concepts uh, you know like the like the vegan menu uh, uh, a keto menu menu uh, a cleanse challenge where she actually has you know people who are um, on a on a cleanse detox challenge with her so she's curating food uh, for for those guests and um, her recent thali that she did the indian thali that she did for independence day i am told is it was a huge hit because uh, uh, i think she was overwhelmed with the orders from whatever that i was reading on on facebook and stuff so good for ankita and here she is with us um completely all gung ho uh, kind of you know all energetic with her vibe hi ankita and welcome to the celebrity foodie show episode 5 good evening to you good evening ethel thank you so much for inviting me and i'm so blessed to be connected with you you're most welcome most welcome but your food your food has been the rave of the town uh, if i could use that word you know for food because usually raves are associated with music and dancing <laughs> <laughs> so food is all about energy too right so how True. how are you feeling now i know you've been working around the clock how are you feeling right now um firstly i i i am very spiritually enlightened so i do feel blessed um uh, in this pandemic you know so much is going on with so so many stories to hear so i feel blessed and humbled with the kind of support we have and it does come with a lot of lot of work lot of team work uh, yes. and it's overwhelming um it, it is overwhelming i mean i don't want to bore you guys with uh, all the uh, you know background work that goes well but ultimately yes um we we are open to customers and our focus is very customer centric and that's exactly what we do um you know understand what the customer requirements are and bring it to them on the table i'm a um i i like to do things um very you know like like you like you gave me gave a beautiful introduction of mine i don't really need to speak much now <laughs> but uh, i like talking myself i am originally from training and hr background mm-hmm. and um i did my culinary studies but i never took it up as a profession actually mm-hmm. i i think uh, the taste of corporate hit me when i was very young and i loved it so for 15 years i did it and i came to malaysia things changed i became a mom mm. and the complete journey just kind of turned around so coming back to that so you know uh, i don't know i mean uh, it could be different for different people right so sure. coming from uh, a mom a family oriented person my focus is always what i eat what my family is what everybody should be able to eat mm. so that's that's where our focus is always you know so whatever dish comes out it has to be wholesome it can't yes. be it can't be just like you said you know the the vibes you know we yes. we cook it with love we we it and it shows in our work you know with the immense um, you know response that we get uh mm. reviews that we get and of course you know we we cannot keep everyone happy and that because keeping in mind that uh food is very subjective right but we sure. take yeah. feedback very gracefully work upon it and move on so that's why our menu is very diverse so when we open the cafe you know like before that i was a uh, full time into catering an event and i loved it mm. i i'm i'm a very individual person i have my own individual way of doing things uh, it's just the way i am nothing wrong in that uh because you know um uh, throughout you know you've been creative in your training and hr background and then i moved yes. to creating an event and i did all i did by myself of course i had a beautiful team at the back end you know um you you cannot nobody can ever say that you can build a palace on your own you sure. can't be successful on your own there has to be a big good support 
which is leading you to what you are doing right now. So mm-hmm. I've been blessed all the time to have good support. People get connected. Uh, I'm a very low profile person. So I don't socialize much. You will not see me in gatherings and yes. and uh, doing tea times and coffee and wine sessions. Why? I don't have time. Uh, <laughs> second, I'm, I would rather invest that time in connecting with good people, with like-minded people, spiritually and otherwise. With food, yes. of course. Anything yes. with food, always game for it. Yes. So our menu is also... So when we started this uh, Waves Cafe, you know, in this pandemic, people are like, are you crazy? Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, people are losing their business and you're going to open a new business. So I I always, um, uh, my, my idea, my, I would say my power, basically my mm-hmm. power comes from my God. Mm-hmm. So I, I just pray about things and, and that's it. And I just do them. And like I got, got connected with you. I read about you so much. I was so fascinated. You know, I don't know when I'll get to meet you. Because you are charming, you know, uh, in your own way. And, uh, you know, you're socially so connected and stuff like that. So I used to always read about you. And I'm like, okay, someday maybe. Because I'm not going to socialize. I'm not going to get into social network to socialize with you. Because, yeah. like I said, I don't have time. And I'm not that kind of person. See, but we got connected. Yes, absolutely. And at, so I completely, at, your, at the restaurant, no? at your, rest, at your restaurant. So at, I completely believe in the power of universe and the power of God. Uh, so in this pandemic, we opened. We, mm-hmm. we, uh, we were blessed with a home. I always wanted to have my own house. And uh, all that happened in the pandemic, you know. Um, uh, so, yes. Wow. And, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we have a beautiful menu. I would I would proudly say that we have more than 120 dishes that we offer. It wow. it was a lot of hard work to get that menu on the table, uh, mm-hmm. but it wasn't it wasn't a very big challenge because I have been into catering for many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I bought that experience onto the table. But it was new to me, of course, serving customers face to face, making sure yes. things were perfect. Uh, so we have had a rocky road, but we had a gorgeous days as well, and with immense community support and outside support as well. So what we yes. did in this pandemic was um, we broke down the cafe menu into various fact, various things, you know, because mm-hmm. everybody needs food. Those are, I think, a very very basic requirement that everybody Correct. would have. And um, you would agree with me that it's very overwhelming for people to be home all the time. Imagine you are such a social person and you have to be home all the time. You yes. know, so it can yes. get on you, especially. And then you have kids, you have work, you have calls. So, so we plugged in a lot of comfort to the customer because that's what I always think of. How can we offer mm-hmm. comfort to our audience or Correct. to our customers? So we plugged in this. I always wanted to do this ghar ka khana. We call mm-hmm. it in my Hindi. Ghar ka khana means homemade food. Yes. People are craving for home style food because every day on a daily basis, you cannot order from restaurants and eat oily stuff, you Mm. know, or, or because people are into fitness as well. You need to watch out what you eat. Right. And, and if you're full time working and you're always online and you have kids and you have a big family, it kind of becomes really overwhelming. Mm. So we took that opportunity plugged in in our, we call it Gharga Khana slash Tiffin service. Mm. And it was a big hit. I know. So, yes. I've been yeah. seeing that. I've been seeing that. Absolutely. So, yeah. And then we plugged in a lot of other things that people are into. Keto, um, vegan. And we keep coming up with different things to excite people. So, basically, what we did was we're actually not doing anything different. It is actually mm. in our menu. Of course, we mm. did some new dishes. But mostly everything was in our menu. But we picked up the menu. And we okay. plugged it into different angles, you know, yes. so that it's easier for people to relate, you know, because yes. the moment you say, oh, I have a cafe menu, why don't you go ahead and order? So Correct. you get switched off. Oh, my God, cafe menu. I don't know how is it going to be. Hmm. Oh, I'm not sure if I would like to offer it to my family. It may be not so healthy. And also, uh, I would like to mention that we offer almost everything. So. For example, if I go dining out, I have my favorite uh, restaurants as well. So mm. we always have this 
issue in our i won't say an issue but uh this um a fight i want to eat yeah. this i want to eat that i don't want to eat this i don't want to eat that so Correct. in our cafe if you're a vegetarian if you are a big lover of uh local food if you're a big lover of um uh, noodles burgers if you love mm. your naan and your butter chicken uh, if you are if you're a coffee uh, you know addict we have everything to offer you yes. so i think I that, that kind yeah. of brings everybody together as well because i think i re- we received a lot of good feedback about this that i don't have to order from two three different places i don't have to think two times to visit you because you have everything mm. available for my family Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you know we have a we have an amazing kids menu we offer them fresh juices with every drink i mean every order so you can have our homemade pizzas you can have burgers pastas and they are all homemade they are not junk food we make our own sauces own marination that's why it is a lot of work we get yes. overwhelmed i have dark dark circles already they- so how many hours how many hours we put in ankita in a day I'm right now because of the detox challenge I'm working 15 hours. Santa Maria. Okay, that's <laughs> wow. And and this is on on a day to day basis, right? Yes, for the next 7 days, yes. Wow. Okay, that is a, that is a lot of energy to be invested. Yes, yeah. I think I don't uh, Ethel everything that I do I have a plan, I have a vision to it. So it was not that mm. okay suddenly I just get up and saying okay, yeah, uh, let's do a detox challenge no we want to build up testimonies we want mm-hmm. we want to showcase that with our food you we can make a difference to your lifestyle correct so, correct yeah so this is what you know whether you dine in whether you order whether you get into our challenge our motive is to provide you a wholesome meal and wholesome meal doesn't have to be boring and you know I mean I I'm coming from a foodie family you know you mm-hmm. know you know back in India food is the main topic moment you okay. get up I still remember uh, as a kid I used to get irritated with my grandmom you know the moment you get up what are you going to eat I'm yes. having a breakfast what are you going to have for lunch what are you going to have for dinner so Correct. food and I've seen how effortlessly our elders used to cook with so much love and passion yes you know Correct. Correct. so that yeah, part yeah, yeah. You're right. That part kind of gets missing when you come into when your passion becomes a business. So I don't mm. want to miss that part. I want to keep that part with me as long as I can forever basically. And I always say this is just this is just the beginning of what I'm doing and I'm sure my God has really amazing plans for me and Correct. I just so take how each day as one day. How old is Waves restaurant? Is it is it a year old, 2 years old? No, not at all. We just opened last December, so we are just six to eight months. And in that, oh. we have yeah, we have already we have in that we've gone in pandemic so many times. So we have actually been fully operational only two months. Fantastic work, then. Congratulations, Ankita. Fantastic Thank you. work. Yeah, Thank fantastic you. work. And since we are on, you know, on menus and contributions and things that way, let me bring Avinash, uh, Chef Avinash, up and. Um, Uh, Chef Avinash, meet Ankita Agrawal, uh, owner of Waves Cafe in Malaysia. Hi, Ankita. Hi, Avinash. very good afternoon, Avinash. Good to very see you. you. Same here. Likewise, it's a pleasure meeting you and listening to your talk. Thank yes, you. And, and, and restaurant is just eight months old. Wow, fantastic wow. work, Ankita. Very good work. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very good work. Great job. So yes. So we, so we were talking. We've been talking about you know grandparents and uh, you know grandmoms inspiring and influencing us. So so Avinash, um, I'm I'm dying to ask you this question because uh, you've been around, you've seen things, you know, you've traveled internationally. What do you think is your own uh, contribution uh, to go in cuisine, and what kind of legacy uh, are you creating for yourself? And I will ask the uh, same question to Ankita too later. Yes. Yes. Uh so um first of all Goan cuisine is quite underrated. Mm. Uh people who known Goan cuisine has have known them for just a limited and I would say a very limited kind of a menu. Yes. Uh I have gone ahead and explored uh, and dug up recipes, lost recipes, ingredients. You know, I can bring up simple examples like a chili. If you go to any household across Goa. Yes. 
are they are basically working and operating with a kashmiri chili and a bhedgi hmm. chili yes these are correct. the two chilies which are in every household all right correct i did a festival last uh, month uh, in bangalore at the ritz carlton where i went with my own chilies i had taken five different variety of variety of our goan chilies okay uh, name a few kankona aldona agonda mapsa and and the peri peri chili or the portuguese chili what they say yes and every chili has a different taste and flavor to it yes now example like this you know when i talk about just a small ingredient such as chili it kind of raises eyebrows people are like wondering wow and mm. this is not something which i have invented it's been there in the past just that over a period of time people have forgotten things people have forgotten their own backyard so mm. it gives me pride and joy and honor to to revive my cuisine all right yes. what i'm doing to my cuisine is giving its rightly deserved uh, recognition it what it does right mm. we otherwise will be diluted and 10 years down, down the line will be just a mix and match and a and a mix and match of everything and nothing authentic yes yes authenticity is something fusion right yeah and also it connects people like for example our traditional uh, rice uh, uh, fermented bread called the sanna hmm. right now the key ingredient for sanna is rice and toddy yes with the toddy type has gone the the recipe itself is going to die down so yeah. you know there's a, there's a link between all these artisans who i call them artisans who are a professional uh, traditional workers and food like the paddy the crop the the, mm. the variety of rice which is grown i mean yes. everyone in restaurant serving basmati rice basmati right. rice yeah. is not not a goan rice Thar it's been rice, a yeah. adaptation which is just stayed along and people have got used to that taste of basmati so you know mm. simple things like this so for me at the restaurant i have revived all these things i'm getting dishes like i serve a sanna which is made out of a red rice mm-hmm. not the white rice so okay. wow. again when we when we speak about this to our guests it is like wow i never knew about this and trust me this is not tourists i'm referring to these are our own local guests local goans who i'm referring to right yes i got a <laughs> i got a i got a i got a smoked mackerel recipe which is a forgotten recipe from the fish folk community Uh, okay. called the hay smoked mackerel or the tornate bangde bangde is uh, mackerel in konkani and yes. tornate thorn is uh, hay so i have revived this recipe back and everyone tells me chef this tastes just like a smoked salmon i said boss mm-hmm. i've just got the recipe back i had the vision of digging up some past and hunt, you know and getting it back this was always there this is not me yes. so yes. i leave if i when i die and i when i when i'm gone i want um people to be aware of our culture and our tradition i mean i don't i don't want me to be known as yes this man uh, kind of uh, showed us the light but i want them to practice whatever our ancestors did that's that will be my real uh, test to what i'm trying to preach here i'm trying to tell everyone go back to our ancestry and see what was being done one more major thing i want to uh, focus on is seasonality Mm. eat fruit whatever in season when you have yeah. a mango have the mango in season don't have a mango in the month of december that's not yeah. uh, th- that's not that's not a month for a mango to be eaten uh, yes. don't eat a watermelon in the rains so yeah. have a jackfruit when it's meant to be so when you stick to seasonality then the then the process of storing and refrigeration and all the whole carbon footprint mm. just gets eliminated Yes, you're absolutely right. In fact, I, yeah. I believe that, that is a, the right way of eating as well. You know, even, yes. even for the body, correct? But even a just... simple example: you have a tomato, you have a tomato in the winters, and you yes. have the same tomato in the summers. The right. summers, because of the intense heat and the condensate um, and the evaporation, the tomato is more sweeter as compared mm. to the one you have in the winter. It's more watery. So mm. it's as simple as that. So a mango will be its best in the month of April, May. Yes. You have it in the month of December. It's a stored one from just got out from a refrigerator or from a cold room. It's been served to you. It's not going to be in its nature's best. Right. Yeah. So in Malaysia, the mango grows throughout the year because of the tropical uh, season, uh, the yeah. tropical weather. I'm not, I'm not going. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about the grafted one. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going. I'm just going by the flow of the natural uh, habitat of a plant. I mean, if, uh, for any, any plant for that matter, it should yes. be held when it's best. in season that's all i'm saying 
But that, that watermelon is grown throughout the year now. But I wouldn't wouldn't want to have a watermelon in the rains. I wouldn't want to have mm-hmm. a watermelon in the beginning of summer when you know really it kicks in and gives you the freshness. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 Avinash, uh, do you feel do you feel it, it's an uphill task uh, doing this uh, because you know that your peers, you know, uh, have a different way of doing things, simpler, easier, right, and maybe profitable as well. But you have been right. you know, swimming against the grain. Yes, I'm doing that. It's not always a smooth ride in terms of time, in terms of uh, 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 economics. It doesn't really uh, work cheaper for me. But yes. if I have to uh, cross that river and make sure that you know recognition is there in terms right. of our culture, then I don't mind doing it. Um, I would definitely take the onus on me. And you say that you know, let me let me bear the flag and go ahead and do it. So yeah. definitely yes. Let definitely awesome. yes. Akita, what about you? What kind of you know? What kind of um, uh, innovation or contribution do you do you feel yourself uh, adding to Indian food in Malaysia? I feel that Indian food. Uh, I mean, if I can rightly say the term here, has been abused. Mm. You know, everybody mm. just kind of. You know, one day I'll, I'll, I, I, of course, I won't mention the name, but one day I just went to a place um, and they were serving um, butter chicken. Uh, you know, it's our favorite, of course. Being yes. from Delhi, I mean, how can you not have butter chicken? So, right. and when it came, I was I was shocked to death. Okay. It was fried chicken with some kind of sauce, and that's yes. how the Malaysian butter chicken is. So I'm like, yes. okay, all right. So, so my vision is to keep the authenticity of the food to its best. You know, mm. like Avinash mm. rightly said, you know. Um, in men, in many elements, you know, he mentioned the seasonality, the the culture. I I think we are losing it by this word of fusion. I also yes. use that word fusion a lot many times. Now, for mm. me, fusion doesn't mean I'm abusing a dish. A fusion right. means I'm combining it to make it a wholesome dish. For example, my burger. My burger doesn't have sauces. Mm. My burger oh. is wholesome patty, homemade patty with goodness. So when you eat, you will feel that you've eaten a burger. So that's fusion for me, you know. Right. So, so I feel the that that we need to come back to our roots. Hmm. You know, yeah. Malaysia has such rich, diverse culture. You know, right. uh, and same goes for I. I think for every country. You know, I'm I'm an Indian. I'm I'm proud Indian. I I love my country, and I would I would when I serve my naan here in my cafe, hmm. they're like, oh. This is not stretchy naan. This is not like the mamak stall naan that we get. Yes. Um, because they're so used to, because we don't put yeast in our naan. I, I don't put yeast in my food. Mm. I, you know, I have my own philosophy. I would rather use fresh elements like yogurt, mm. lime, yeah. things like that to do my dishes. So like this is original way of eating the food. Oh, how come your sauce is so thick? I said, this is how you suppose. So when people see the food, this is how the food is supposed to be eaten. You know, right. so I would like to keep the end, not just for Indian food, any mm. food that I serve to the customer, be it a Malaysian food or an Asian or a kid's Western. I think we should keep the originality of the food. Yes, I agree too. I best. agree too. Because when I was exploring food myself in Malaysia, you know, and of course, you know, starting off with eating out at Mamak's, the concept generally was that that is Indian food. And I was like, no, because India has 32 states. So it has 32 diverse cuisines and then sub-cuisines, correct? So you can't call it Indian food. It is maybe food of a particular region of Kerala. Regional food. Or of Tamil, yeah, regional food or Tamil Nadu. Um, but it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's a lack of... Um, education that also is out there and therefore you know um, committed chefs like you and avinash uh, it is it is the onus on you to also educate and i keep telling that you know to, you can know, i to add on here talk about education ethel sorry yes, i mean yes. i'm barging into the conversation no. but i couldn't uh, stop to barge in please go so ahead. at the restaurant mm. at the restaurant i do showcase something what is this i don't know whether you can see this this is a miniature bread basket Ah yes. Which I put it, which I put on a trolley, and okay. I've done a miniature oven. Okay. And how a small cycle, and this basket lies on the cycle. Basically, okay. we narrate the entire story of a poder, of a baker. Baker. Yeah. So nostalgic. We tell our guests that listen, 
as children we never woke up to an alarm clock it yes. was the honk of the baker which woke us up which told us it was 6 o'clock time to wake up yes and religiously the guy used to land up at 6 dot at our doorstep with bread now uh if you see here i've got various shapes of goan bread so i've got a mini miniature poi bread here so i'm getting it close to you this yes. is a poi bread a miniature with uh, wheat husk and wheat, wheat bran mm. then there is this is a uh, unde yeah. or our pao okay Correct. uh yeah. you you recognize this this is a corn corn or a bangle looks like a bagel uh, yes i think those almost yes. went I've gone extinct now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no, but we, I've got my my baker doing it. This is a bowl which is had during tea time. So I've done right. a miniature kind of a set. So this educates the the ones who are coming to Goa, mm -hmm. the the tourists who are coming to Goa. Ki Goa is not about only this bread, which is a poi. This is a full size poi, which I wanted to show uh, the audience in Malaysia as well. Yes, uh, you said. Uh, Uh, that ankita said that yes you don't e use yeast i love the fact that you don't use yeast in your food uh, poi is a bread which is basically uh, done used to be done with toddy rice fermented uh, uh, sorry uh, fermented toddy sap from the coconut tree mm -hmm. and that tree used to be the rising agent for it uh, so with the with the toddy tap was not there uh, we've lost that uh, thing uh, so far you know so here's yeah. the effort trying to get the guys together trying to pep them up uh, last uh, two months back i had one guy on my show and okay. i do this tables called uh, you know table in the hills where i where i get artisans and i mm. ask them to talk to talk about their dying culture they talk about their difficulties and mm. how we should all community of chefs restaurateurs entrepreneurs should help these small thriving uh, um, communities yes. i don't know if i have time but again i am not a poet but i have written a small poem which i offer this to the guest when we serve a bread basket i can read out read it out to yeah. you but if if it's if the time is a constraint then i'll i'll hold it back for some time but let let's see what dishes you have because we we as i said you know we have a huge uh, we have uh, joseph from malacca saying hi to you so, Mal so malacca has portuguese roots you know yes. in uh, yes. in, uh, yes. in malaysia and they're Sorry. all want they are planning an event in goa very soon so joseph hi thank you for uh, joining us geeta geeta says hi i think she is uh, um geeta knows of course you know waves cafe so she says okay. she's saying hi to ankita um yeah i can see wow i can see another comment saying uh, this is again i think since we are talking about goa right saying that you know food mingyal braganza from goa saying food with love and passion that is how it is for me It, I think it is for all of us, and he's also talking about the chilies uh, that you mentioned: Aldona black, Harmal medium, cola chilies, yeah. all that. So, so our yeah. audience are clued in, correct? They are, they are following us. They are, they are following your chat, and they know exactly what you know what is being said, and this entire uh, philosophy that both of you are uh, putting out, saying that you know food is all about uh, keeping, uh, staying true to your authenticity. saying right. true to your traditions and to your customs and to your own philosophy of putting you know health as your priority so ankita right. back to you um when you keep saying you are what you eat how did this philosophy you know establish that this was going to be uh, you know the uh, the anthem of your waves cafe i have actually always believed in it that what you know like i'm from training and hr background so in the corporate we used to always say this you know you put junk in your head junk will come out la mm -hmm. you know like that kind of a thing so it it really matters you 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 start your day at a good note everything will just go blissfully you know yes. so yes. so i think it it i i don't really have a story behind it uh, to be very very honest i never would never fabricate one uh, but it just kind of happened because i've been always believed in it Uh, in my professional career and my personal way also so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so so you both of you have dishes to showcase to us and i think i'm looking forward to it because uh, uh, you know um, i've been also ah well you know the goa food pang sometimes happens in once in a while and there's nothing to substitute it with so avinash mm -hmm. let's see what you have what you have to show us okay today. so i'm not at the restaurant i'm at my home so i thought of showcasing one simple dish to all our audience back there okay right. if you can see the camera 
this is one vegetable which is uh, uh, so commonly oh, grown this is the red amaranthus uh, we call this tamdi baji or it's oh. been called as red spinach all over india and the world so what yeah. i do is what i do is i serve it encased in a filo pastry okay, with some caju wow. butter so caju butter okay caju butter yeah so in greece there's a dish by the name of spanakopita spanakopita is spinach with feta and cased mm-hmm. in a filo pastry i do my own version of spanakopita but using all our goan ingredients all right mm-hmm. and, uh, this is exactly the way i serve it in uh, notice this is a tile from our farm at uh, in in veli and uh, i have uh, i've kept back the tile i have kept the baji which grows at the farm and i serve it on this so that the whole um, very integration of yes yeah. so the indi- integration of new as to old uh, as to authentic uh, authentic uh, taste and flavors so this yes. is a classic example of what i do with uh, my goan uh, cuisine um, right. a- apart from that i've got some goan sausages which are out here um, so these let, are the let, let me look at it properly <laughs> yes no yes. goan sausages in malaysia <laughs> oh well, my yes. god Oh my yeah, god these are, these are these are smoked these are uh, you know smoked sausages beautiful yes. i i can't explain the the aromas and the smoky yeah. flavor i'm getting out of them uh, wow. yeah but uh, uh, please feel free to follow me on facebook and insta because i keep do i keep posting a lot of my innovative uh, twisted going uh, thing but again it's authentic traditional flavors i don't mess around with the flavors correct So Akita the, the goan sausage is is like uh, it's like uh, uh, how to it's uh, it's like history for us uh, wherever whichever part of the world a goan may be the family will parcel goan sausages to you that is it it is customary you know so everybody uh, who is traveling from goa to whether whether wherever whether it's the middle east whether it is the uk you will find a, a packet of goan sausage all wrapped up tight in you know in um, what is it uh, in those you know either bubble wrap because i've seen my mom doing it you know uh, every time we used to travel and every goan true to his soil and salt will wait for you to come home to them with the goan sausage that's it it's it, it's like a memory that travels you know so every goan when you say the goan sausage you will say you know ah, your mouth will start watering <laughs> totally i can't that's wait to visit goa back again yes you know uh, let's see what you have Let's see what you have. So I have just something really, really simple. I am at home as well. We uh, so I just wrapped up my work and came. So I have this falafel burger that we do. We make our own patties, um, mm-hmm. and then we serve them with a wholesome salad and our dressing. So I don't know if you'll be able to see. That's how it looks like. So the even the buns are homemade. We don't make okay. it ourselves, uh, okay. but we have a home baker who does it for us. And there is no sauce inside it, like like dripping sauce. it has mm. a fresh yogurt garlic dip to it and it goes really well with falafel because falafel could be dry it is made up of chickpea and lots yes. of other wholesome indian spices in it and i have a small kitchen garden in my cafe mm. um i would love to have a big one though uh, <laughs> you know and actually the where where we stay uh, in our condo it's very blissful they grow a lot of different kind of herbs and stuff so i have this little corner um you know of herbs that i grow and i pick up my herbs from there so okay. yeah so so Mal- malaysia soil is so fertile anything and everything it is, grows it is it is yeah it is blissful i mean it has its own rich uh, ingredients and culture and yeah correct uh let me bring up some comments uh, eric uh, eric is saying great stories from uh, both the guests this is more success to you and, and ethel as well thank you eric thank you for staying on into the show So Chef Kaya is a, is another guest who was part of my Teleta Foodie in the past two you know Fridays, who's a uh, who's a complete champion of you know of veganism. So she is also watching us. She's saying wonderful sharing from both both of these individuals. As I mentioned, uh, you know um, uh, Kaya also kind of you know pushes the entire vegan philosophy of you know cooking at home, clean eating, healthy eating as a, as a as a way of life. and um, uh, as i said you know uh, there is joseph from malacca who's also watching us he came on specially because he knew there was a goan chef joining the sirata foodie show so it was like 
you know let me kind of you know um, uh, come online and watch with you too so thank you to all our you know to all our uh, online guests who are joining with us uh, who are online sharing you know um, their feedback as well thank you because you really kind of you know keep the energy uh, going for us too so coming back to avinash um well you know i think what you are doing in in my in my opinion because having seen you know food uh, so so widely now uh, putting uh, putting go in food on 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 some sort of a, a michelin standard standard if you know what i'm saying right right from yeah. your plating uh, and you know and you, all our guests online here can go check his page uh, you know an instagram page too um, uh, to see what he does uh, chef avinash martins uh, so how how did this idea even strike you know come about because you see go in restaurants in goa and then you see cavatina and what you do correct so how how did this entire idea of you know of plating it and you know putting such a fine dine kind of you know uh, spin on to that uh, so asel i'm an artist i uh, look at food food as an art form mm. and uh, major go in restaurants i would say all of them actually the food is very flavorful and you've got all the elements of goa into it but the appeal is basic you know uh, it's been put in a uh, dish or a plate and it's just put uh, garnish with uh, chili or a tomato and cucumbers and that's about it yes there's correct no appearance to a dish so that's where i said this i need to kind of bridge the gap there and i want to work with my artistic mind and the creative kind of a soul that that's in me to get the uh, the how to highlight the dishes so mm. i am uh, at the restaurant there's a 12 course tasting menu which i do oh okay. which is for goa it comes uh, the emotions to it and you won't see uh, and tell saying it's goan food just by mm. the look of it yes you know there are uh, there are dishes which uh, for example uh, i call them the prawns who drank the fenny oh okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll laugh when you read the menu, and I like to see that smirk on everyone's face because you know it. it, it, it we must tell we must tell Ankita about the kaju feni too. I don't know if, if Ankita, you know, um, has ever tasted the kaju feni. It is phenomenal. Yes, so it's a. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Which a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't like the flavor." So I got about ten, fifteen YouTube videos. I went from fluffy flour to a kokum chili to a mix of aromatic spices to a galangal. So I've done about different flavors to kind of mask and get the the order a bit slower, but mm. the flavor. So I think every element of Goa, right mm. from Right from sausage, right from poi, yes. can be you know showcased in a different way rather than just doing the usual. Yes. So that's the thing I stand apart, and I mean uh, I I would love to call myself a Michelin. There's no Michelin guide come to India yet, yes. but I would definitely give the credit to my team uh, again. Who without them I'm. i could have done, couldn't have done much my my better half uh, also has a big hand in in mm. getting a cavatina where it is um in fact i've got about five girls ladies working for me uh, in the restaurant and mm. they all packed like fire you know right. it's not a uh, and a men team anymore yes. i am proud that you know i they, they've told me they they've written to me they've mailed me chef you are doing a fantastic job we want to join in and yeah. i think that i think i am successful it's not just your customers come to you and say we like your food it's when your back end with which your teams back to us and chef we are with you let's do this so that yes. gives me the that gives me the power that gives me the drive to wake up every day and say hey let's let's do something different today yeah correct so, and i'm and i'm sure ankita agrees with that too because you know she's a restaurant owner too uh, right ankita the team uh, I, mean, i think without the customers come the second part but if you have a strong team and you if you have the respect factor yes. uh, you know and if it's mutual if you, there's love there is fire there is understanding there is fun you know mm. we do a lot of fun i mean um we we take care of their mental health as well but i think if if they are fine everything else will fall fine 
Yes, it may take absolutely. a little time, but eventually we'll get there. But it's it's the well-being of the people. I think uh, it's more more important than anything else, uh, especially in this COVID time. You know, and not just COVID time, but you know, people. I think it's become a. Uh, I would say a term nowadays for everything we we say because of COVID. But but even um, you know when when um, I was in my corporate uh, experience, I think that human touch and factor is very important. If you have mm. a great team, you can achieve anything. Your vision yes. because they they should be able like you know when I open my cafe, I'm new to this. You know, I like I said before in my introduction, I I I have worked independently before. Mm. When it comes to food, you know. So sharing a vision with somebody is not easy, and yes. for them to understand that vision is also not easy. So I yes. fall, I get up. Okay, you don't you, know, you don't kind of get along with one person. You move on to the next. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, so it's 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 a juggle, but until you find the right person which shares your vision, respects your food, respects your thoughts, and mutually you do the same. You know. Yes, I think that so. is that is that is the right uh, right balance to have. Uh, especially, I think, when the, the team dynamics, right? So, so what plans for uh, for waves? We have what another, I think, four five months to close the year. We have Merdeka week coming, so we have okay. amazing uh, tea time platters for Merdeka Day. We want to celebrate, embrace all cultures. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to leave anybody. We're not going to yeah. leave anybody. We're going to fill you up with lots of love with our food. Um, and so, yes, so this week, so we keep coming up because, because Malaysia is all about celebration, right? So we keep coming up with, you know, like we have Rakhi tomorrow. So we have, why, why? I mean, I don't have my brothers here, but that doesn't mean I, I shouldn't celebrate, right? And celebration yes. starts with food. Correct. So we're doing a Rakhi special. Uh, and then the whole week we are celebrating Marika mm -hmm. uh, because the spirit of Independence Day. And this is my second home. And I respect that. It gave me my vision. Correct. So for the whole next, until the end of the year, I don't know. But okay. I take each you day will, as a new day. Yeah, so, you, will, you will roll roll with the waves. <laughs> yes, that's right. You know, yeah, correct. Wow. This has been an awesome talk, actually. I think a good 60 minutes have, have gone by. Uh, I know that Avinash also has to kind of, you know, uh, has to another appointment that he has to be at. Uh, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, both of you made the time today. As I said, we couldn't host it yesterday on, on, on a Friday. So we did it on a Saturday because I was traveling and, you know, and travel uh, na travel now is very stressful. Uh, it, it's not the, uh, the old days of, you know, we just hopped on and hopped off, right? There are too many things to do. But anyway, so, you know, uh, you made the time. All our guests online made the time. There's so much of history that Avinash has shared today, which I'm sure, you know, will also inspire a lot of other young uh, uh, wanting to be food entrepreneurs out there. Do you how to stick stick true to your to your soul, right? And where you come from, and then what do you do with that, right? How do you add, uh, add innovation to it, or your own, you know, a touch of legacy to it? So which you are doing, Ankita is doing it in her own way, you know, with uh, the food that she has grown up with. And also making sure that the food, uh, you know, that she eats at home is also, you know, made available to her clients and guests who also want, you know, the same kind of, you know, the same kind of familiar flavors, as I call it. So thank you to you both for joining us, for making the time and for sharing your dishes. And I wish Avinash could just pack those and send me the sausages <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> and, you know, when Ankita comes to Goa, we're going to make sure that we take her uh, you know, on, on a feigny drinking binge, Avinash. So, Ankita, that's Absolutely. that's a promise from us. We are two Goans here who like our feigny and sausages. <laughs> Actually, Avinash, uh, just to share with you, my father-in-law is is a big name in the hotel industry. So, yeah, he's 50, 60 years in the industry. My, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, all in the hotel industry. So, I think it was it was meant to be married in the family that sooner or later i'm going to do something with food so yeah. very good wow. having us on the show and it's good. thank you ethel i mean i think it takes a lot of energy to get get people connected like-minded people get connected and spending your time you know uh, and getting us together 
It's complete. It's it's completely. It's it's fun for me. I've been doing it for the past thirty years, so it's completely. It just flows, you know. And the idea, as I said, you know, is to keep creating great content that people can identify with, that can enrich them, you know, their their spirits. Also, to, it's also a give back that also happens in because that's what we are. We need to do, right? I mean, gifts need to share. So you're doing it. Avinash is doing it, and the world is a much better place for that. So thank you, Ankita, for making the time. And thank you, Chef Avinash, for making your time too, um, you know, and sharing your, all your little tidbits. As I said to my guests, we will drop links down in the comment box so you can reach out to both. Check them out on their Facebook and check them out on your on their Instagram as well. Like and share this video, share it with friends so they also get inspired. Thank you once again, Ankita, and thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. evening. Have a good evening, Avinash. Good to connect with you. Thank you. See you. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. We also have a winner to announce today of, uh, of my Sunday IG contest, which happens on my Instagram every Sunday. So um, Sean Lim is the winner of the last uh, Sunday contest. We are throwing a question out, uh, you know, asking our uh, my audiences, uh, which is the famous place in France that you will find most of the cheese and apple cider, you know, uh, um, known for it, right? The right answer was Normandy. And uh, of course, you know, some of you got it right and some of you followed all the steps to enter and some of you did not. So Sean Lim uh, wins it because he followed all the steps. So Sean, um, I will reach out to you uh, for, you know, for your address and stuff like that. The, the contest prize comes from 29 Home Cooked Foods by Anton. Anton Kamar was also part of my uh, of the Selected Foodie Show excellent French, uh, home-based French chef. So uh, the prize comes from him. Thank you for participating. And to all those who are online or who will watch, every Sunday on my Instagram, there is a Sunday ID contest that happens in with some fabulous prizes going out. So make sure that you hit my Instagram on Sundays. To everyone who has been part of my show today, thank you for joining in. Thank you for all the fabulous comments, you know, and uh, sharing your tidbits uh, with us as well, uh, along with our guests who were also were part of it. Um, have a great weekend. Uh, stay strong, stay safe, keep your immune system healthy. Make sure that you eat uh, home cooked foods and keep your mind, body, spirit in balance. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your love too. Good night.